All right, folks, let's jump into this. Uh, this week, uh, what I want to talk about is something that um, I personally find very interesting to think about a lot and something that I think is directly applicable to your real estate investing business, something that you can pretty much start doing right away because it's not so much a specific tactic. This is one of the things like everybody wants to know about tactics. Everyone wants to know like, hey, well, what's going on in Facebook? What's going on in, in Google? What's going on in YouTube? All this stuff. All that stuff is very important, of course. But um, one of the things that uh, about tactics like that is that they change very rapidly. They change constantly. Facebook is a great example of this. If you are a real estate investor, you're doing Facebook right now, there is a lot that is happening to shut down the kind of advertising that real estate investors have done on Facebook forever. And I'll probably end up doing another video on the changes inside Facebook and everything, but that's all changing very rapidly. And it's, it's a situation that's that's kind of in, in flux. So it's, it's hard to know exactly what's going on. But one of the things that changes a lot less often is the strategy that underlies the tactics, right? So if you can understand the strategy, if you can understand why we are doing the things that we are doing, why we are testing, the, the things that we are testing, the way that we are testing them. If you can understand those things, you can actually understand um, the tactics even as they change and you can be sort of ahead of the market in many instances. And so a good example of this. Let's talk about barbell strategies. Um, and oops, my thing is... Um, Whoops, sorry, I'm just uh, doing that thing. So let's talk about barbell strategies, okay? Now, uh, what is a barbell strategy? A barbell, you imagine like a spectrum, right? And we've got a picture of a spectrum right here. And over on the left and over on the right, we have these kind of opposing elements of the spectrum. So let's put uh, something on here. Let's say how someone feels about or thinks about their health. On the left, we've got something I like to call blissful ignorance, which is I don't think about my health at all. I just do whatever I'm going to do, completely natural. I don't apply any sort of rational thought process to it at all. And on the right, we've got hypochondria, which is I worry about my health all the time. I'm constantly thinking about it. I'm constantly looking at like all my health stats and I'm like, obsessing about every single number, right? So over on the left, we've got blissful ignorance. Over on the right, we've got hypochondria. And in the middle, we've got a various spectrum of people and everyone's gonna fall somewhere on this line, right? Now, most people, what they wanna do is they wanna go for Aristotle's golden mean, which is kind of, you go straight down the middle and you say, look, I don't, I don't wanna be completely ignorant, but I don't wanna be a hypochondriac. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down the middle. And what is the middle of this spectrum look like? Well, it's something like, you know, I, I try to be healthy, but I don't obsess about it. I, I, I try to eat healthy. I try to go to the gym. I try to do this, but like, oh, I'm not super obsessed about it, right? So we're avoiding the anxiety that comes with hypochondria while also avoiding the negative consequences that come from completely ignoring our health. And that all sounds really good. But the problem with this approach is that being in the center of this barbell, because it looks like a barbell, right? Being in the center of it, actually gives you the worst of both worlds. You end up getting some of the anxiety of the hypochondriac, right? You have this anxiety that like, I'm not really doing enough. Like, yeah, I kind of know my numbers, but I, I don't really, and I, I don't have a great grasp on it. So there's this nagging sense that somehow this isn't enough versus you get the, so a lot of the negative impacts of complete ignorance because in many times you are not actually doing enough to change your situation, right? Sort of intermittently going to the gym or kind of thinking about your diet or trying to eat healthy often is not enough to actually change the underlying sort of state of your body. And so we're sort of we're in the middle of the barbell and we end up getting the worst of both possible worlds. Let's look at this in a different context, right? Let's think about a real estate investor doing their marketing. Okay, and on the left, all the way on the left, we have people who don't do any marketing at all. They don't think about their marketing. They don't test it, uh, blah, whatever. I, I don't know. I send out a couple postcards a week. That's all I do. And then on the right, we have someone that's doing way too much marketing. So they're testing every possible marketing channel, no matter what. They're running thousands upon thousands upon thousands of split tests. They're actually doing so much testing. There's so much noise. They actually can't tell what's going on. Right? So both ends of the bar barbell, right? Opposite sort of polar ends of this spectrum where we got on the person on the left not doing anything and the person on the right doing too much. Now, again, what most investors are going to do is they're going to try to find 
the mean. They're going to try to find the middle of the barbell. And what most people are going to say is like, yeah, I do some marketing and I test some things here and there. Right. So I do I do a little bit, but I try not to obsess about it. Right. It's exactly the same as the person in the health example. Right. I try to eat healthy. I try to go to the gym, but I don't obsess about it. This person in the marketing example. Yeah, I, I test some things here and there, but I don't obsess about it. But again, this brings us the worst of both possible worlds. Right. We are you know, kind of testing, but we're not doing enough testing to actually get the improvement, right? And at the same time, we're like taking on some of the anxiety of like trying to do it at all. So it's not as relaxing as the person who does nothing and it's not as effective as the person who does everything. And so we kind of get the worst of both possible worlds, right? And this is the trouble with moderation, right? The middle of the barbell brings a sense of anxiety that we're not doing enough while not providing enough momentum to actually change our situation. So what is the alternative? If the golden mean is not the solution, what is? Well, this brings us to a barbell strategy. And a barbell strategy in finance basically says you're, you're making sure that like 90% of your capital is very safe and you're using the remaining 10% on extremely risky investments. So rather than going down the middle and trying to find things that are like medium safety, medium risky, you go mostly just completely conservative, 100% safe, and then you take a small percentage of that and you go all the way to the right and you say, I'm going all the way risky with a small percentage of my total capital, right? And the exact percentage can change. It could be 80, 20, 90, 10, whatever it is. But instead of going down the middle, you load the ends of the barbell, right? So again, we're not trying to find the thing that's like in the middle of risky and safe, we're taking mostly safe things and then we're taking some things and we're saying, I'm going all the way risky on this, right? So I hope that makes sense, right? So let's look at it in terms of our health example, right? Okay, so rather than going in the middle of the barbell, which again is like, hey, I try to work out, I try to watch what I eat, uh, but I try not to obsess about it, right? What we're gonna do is take 80% of our health, time, energy, effort, focus, whatever you wanna call it, and we're just gonna put it on autopilot. We're not gonna think about it at all. And then we're going to take the remaining 20% of our health, time, energy, focus, effort, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to focus on improving those things with an obsessive level of detail. Now, because I'm not obsessing about everything, I'm only obsessing about a very specific type of thing, and I'm really only spending a tiny percentage of my time, effort, money, focus, whatever you want to call it, I'm avoiding much of the anxiety of someone who's going to be a hypochondriac about everything, but I'm also getting significant benefit in those areas by really massively improving them, right? Now, let's think about this, and let's think about this in terms of marketing, right? So let's think about this in terms of REI marketing, all right? If we are marketing for, for our real estate investing business, and you absolutely should, right? REI is very much a marketing and sales business at its core, right? We're spending 80% of our time, energy, budget, whatever you want to call it. Let's change this to budget, right? And we're putting that marketing on autopilot. We're saying, look, I'm not trying to change everything all at once, but I don't want to ignore it. So 80% of it, I'm just going to put it on autopilot. I'm going to let it run. I'm going to let it do its thing. But 20% of my budget, my time, my energy, my focus, I'm going to uh, focus on improvement and or testing, right? So I'm going to be trying new channels or I'm going to be trying new ads within those channels. I'm going to be testing new headlines. I'm going to be testing new strategies, whatever it is, even new providers, right? Working with new people, whatever it is. 20%, 10% of my time, energy, budget is going towards those risky things that I'm trying to improve. And then 80% of it, I'm putting it on autopilot. What that's going to do is minimize the amount of anxiety that, and stress that we're taking on while maximizing the total amount of improvement that we can gain. And here's what I mean by that, right? Tiny gains have a massive power to improve your business long term. Right. So this is a really good example of just like 1% improvement every day. So 1% improvement every day, because it's cumulative, can have a massive impact over the course of a year. Right. So what we're trying to do is we're not saying like, look, every single thing I do has to work. Every single thing I do has to be successful. Every single test I do has to win. That's never going to be the case. But by consistently following a barbell strategy, what ends up happening is that by the end of the year, you are far beyond 
the person who tried to stay in the middle of the barbell. Again, you're not taking on a ton of risk, but by putting some time and effort and budget and focus and energy and all that stuff into small experiments that have the potential to really make a difference over the course of long term, you end up way farther along than you would have been otherwise. And the way I think about this, right, is I really think about tinkering. I think about this from a tinkerer's mindset. For most of your business, most of your life, most of your health, most of whatever you're trying to work on and improve and maximize over time, you want to put a lot of that just on autopilot. We just we have limited cognitive bandwidth. We just can't focus on everything at once. It just doesn't work. But if you pick out a few areas where you're like, look, I could really have an impact here. And you just tinker with it consistently. You say, I'm going to try this thing and see how it works. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Then I'm going to move on to the next thing. I'm going to try this thing and see if it works. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Then I'm going to move on. I'm going to try the next thing. And maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. And you do that consistently over and over and over. What ends up happening is that over the period of a year, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever you are looking at, you are going to be much, much further along than if you tried to stay in the middle of the barbell and just try to do a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Rather than trying to go for Aristotle's golden mean, think about the barbell and thinking about what 80% of everything that I'm working on can I just put on autopilot and not think about, and what 10 to 20% can I really focus in on and really try to improve. And that is how you maximize your long-term performance while minimizing your short-term stress, anxiety, disaster, depression, whatever you want to call it. And that, my friends, is the barbell strategy. Now, I hope this makes sense. I hope this is useful. You let me know in the comments or let me know, you know, leave me a whatever. Just leave me a comment somewhere online. Let me know what you think because I would very much like to see what your take is on a barbell strategy like this and how you can apply it to your real estate investing business. Because I got to tell you, we apply this at our business and it has been massively valuable. I hope it is the same for you. Let me know what you think, everyone. I will be talking to you very soon. This is Danny Barrett signing off. Cheers.